Yeah, I'm fixing to sit back down with this monster. Mm. Oh, that's so cute. Hey, oh, kitty. Oh, I'll be close. Hi there. Big monster. Oh, he's so cuddly. Where, where are you going? <laughs> Here, turn up. No, that's my boob. I just turned the camera back on, you weirdo. Here, say hi. Hi there. That's my leg. Hey. All right, okay, you're over. Come over. He's like, nope, no. thank you. <laughs> okay, I can go over. Nice I, he decorated my front porch. It's not that smelly yet, so I don't know why he ran away. I'm usually good with animals, but anyway. He's, he wants out, out, out. Outdoor. Yeah. And Maybe I'm something. Out. He wants to hunt something. No, he doesn't hunt anything. No. The funny thing is, when the rats get out of the cage, all the cats like her. Uh, they herd them back in the laundry room. They sit at the door and like. <laughs> they do. They'll sit there and watch them and like make sure they don't go running around through the house because. Um, if one does get out of the cage, like we have one that is crazy, it opens the, the latch on the door to the cage and they'll get out and run around on the cage and bless you and run around the laundry room and um, the cats will like corral the rats back in the, the laundry room and they'll sit there and guard the door. They don't attack the rats or anything. Wow, that's pretty. What are you doing? Well, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. He's right behind you. But you were always good with animals. Yeah, I was a weirdo that would pick up snakes in the wild. <gasps> I did that once when I was about eight or nine years old, a garden snake. Those are fun. They like to bite. Damn, now you tell me. They do. They, <laughs> well, uh, because they're so little that they think everything's going to eat them. Well, the one thing I had with snakes was one time there was a copperhead out on the sidewalk when I was living in Lake Carmel, New York. And Lake Carmel, New York is known as a copperhead kingdom. They're all over the place. I took my axe and that snake got chopped into about 50 pieces in one minute. You ever, see the, you ever see the Lord of the Rings? I was like Gimli with the axe. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have thought it was cute and brought it in the house. Oh, that's cute. Oh, that's cute. No. I brought a pippy rattlesnake in the house one time. Oh my god. I scared the shit out of my mom with it. She uh, was up on that desk trying to get up on the cabinets that used to be above it. Trying to get away from the me and the snake. You see that little thing up there? The spider? The blinds? Oh. Yeah. I would have been walking across that thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, she was, she was trying to get up on top of the cabinets that were um, up there that were attached to the back of the desk, trying to get up on top of them. And it was cute. It was only about this big. And she's like, do you know what that is? I was like, yeah, it's a snake. And it's going ch -ch 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 in my hand. And I just have it like this in my hand. She's like, that's a big, big rattlesnake. I'm like, eh? <laughs> it wasn't trying to bite me. It was trying to bite her in my hand. And that was fine. I was fine. <laughs> I thought it was cute. Oh. But yeah, I've um, I think spending all those months that I did in Marion County Jail made me look at life a lot differently. I looked at how the girls came in. I talked to a lot of the girls about what their charges were, what they were in there for, how long they had been in, whether or not they had been in the system before. Um, just various things that were like pertinent to their case. I did a lot of paralegal work while I was in jail. Uh, it's funny, I got to use my paralegal degree more in jail than I ever did while I was in school or interning at the, at the one lawyer's office. But you know, what's funny is I was so angry when I went to jail and I was so angry about why I was in there and what my charges were and the fact that nobody would listen. It was so maddening to think here, I no sir, get off of that. No, I know you want to go outside. You're not going outside. No. <laughs> no. Please, mommy, please. It's almost like you said. <laughs> okay. So, um, I know from going to jail and being in there on uh, the charges that I was in there for and the fact that nobody would listen to me until I was convenient. Like when another lady was brought up on charges and I was a witness to the case, that's when they decided to come and talk to me. I sat in jail for months and never saw a judge, never saw a lawyer, never saw nobody but the other girls that were in my pod. And at that time we were segregated. There was anywhere between 15 and, and 28 of us in one um, pod. And then they uh, changed the rules of the jail and they moved us all to this airplane hangar. And I went from having like anywhere between 15 and, and 25 people in a room, in a general room area with me at one time to being in a room between 90 and 100 women all varying charges and we were in um 
where I came from, I was in the room with all the child molesters and the people on sex crimes and murderers and people that were in there on manslaughter and domestic violence charges and any type of like violent crime or sex related crime is where I was located because I was in there on violence charges. I just saw a truck pull out of the driveway. Uh, so I was very angry while I was in jail and I, by the time I got out, it's not that jail had broken me. I had changed my perspective on things. And even after I got out of jail, I was still very angry. I know. I remember you then. And I would lash out at anybody and everybody. And then something clicked. And during that time period when she was lashing out at people, I was doing my best to help her with the anger and saying to her, you've got to stop being so angry. You've got to stop lashing out. Let it go. And I look and I couldn't. I would just dwell on it, and it just made it that much worse. But eventually, you got yourself to the point where you're not just lashing out anymore. No, I still like when I have real high pain days and stuff. I do on a tendency um, when people call me out of the blue that I haven't talked to in months and tell me that they love me and they want to see me, and I call them all kinds of inappropriate names, which are very accurate, but they're inappropriate names, and then I hang up on them. But you know, um, I do have bouts of anger but I'm not as angry as I used to be because I have learned it's all a change of your mindset on things and how you view things mm -hmm. and that I think was a big eye-opener for me I had to take a step back and look at things from a different perspective and that's why I'm so calm now uh, because I realized I was just doing more harm to me than anything and that was what I was telling you all those times when we would talk online. I would tell you, you can't do this. It's no good for you. Yeah, and it finally sunk in. And I'm so glad. You had to beat me enough times to get it to work, but it worked, right? <laughs> yes, it did. I'm, she... so pr I'm so proud of you because you... Uh... The other piece of that's over here. It's in there. And I'm so proud of this lady for how she is. I, I really am for the stuff she went through. You've seen I'm, me for quite a bit. You've seen me lose my kids. Mm -hmm. You've seen me get my kids back. You've seen my mom be absolutely hateful and I lost my kids again. Um, you were there when I got married to the guy that tried to kill me. <laughs> Which um, is a wonder. <laughs> I never married anybody who tried to kill me. But I did have one wife tell me that if she had a gun in her hand and knew she was 110% certain of getting away with it, she, she would have blown my brains out. Mm -hmm. That's when I told her I was transitioning. And she got angry, to say the least. The funniest part about that was the time she came into the bedroom that I didn't, hadn't moved out yet. I had moved into one bedroom on the other side of the house away from me. So you were still in there, okay? No, we were in Port Orange then. Okay. And um, <laughs> she came into the room and she started banging her head against the wall. And I said, what are you doing? Stop, you're going to hurt yourself. She goes, I'm going to call the police and mm -hmm. have you yeah. arrested for domestic violence. I'd be like, sure, go right ahead. You can harm yourself all you want. I'm going to sit here and videotape. Well, I I had a cell phone. I didn't couldn't videotape with the cell phone I had. This was in 19... No, just after 2000, January 2000. So what I did was I called the Port Orange Police Department and told the police what, were going, what was going on. So an officer came out to the house and he looked at her and saw a little bruise on her head. And he looked at my hands, and he saw no discoloration on my hands that would have shown that I hit her. He looked at her neck and saw no marks on her neck that would have said that I was had her and tried to bang her head against the wall. I didn't do anything at all, and two days later I was living in an apartment. <laughs> my ex-husband shot himself in the chest in Walmart. They caught him on videotape while while the cops were at. This was before he even called the cops. Before I got arrested, he went to Walmart with our roommate. And they caught him in the back of Walmart where the airsoft guns are, mm -hmm. shooting himself, and ended up there was a perfectly round beauty hole in his chest and blood burning on his shirt. When he finally went back out, he, the manager of Walmart escorted him out of Walmart because, and the, the dumb part that he did was when he was walking out of Walmart, he was doing this. Okay, when you choke somebody, mm. you're, you're, the hand position is different. He was doing this, and then he left, they told him to leave. And he went out, out front where the payphones are and called the cops. And, and then, of course, the cops came out. And I was I had barricaded the door to the bedroom because I was afraid of what he would do to me because I was covered head to toe in bruises. And I had been puking my brains out for days and couldn't figure out why. Everything was coming out both ends. I was so sick I could barely stand. And um, 
when the cops kicked the door in, I was laying in bed in a tank top and a pair of jeans or leg, and it was only a male officer there. There was no female officers on the property at the time. When he came in and almost broke my arm off trying to, he was on me and had my arm wrenched up behind my back. And for those that don't know, I'm double jointed. I can pop my shoulders out of joint and I can reach all the way up to here on my back. And needless to say, with his help, my hand was on the back of my head. And after he got me in handcuffs, that's when the female officer showed up. And the law in Florida is you can't enter a residence, um, even if there was cause for concern, with only a male officer when there's only a female home. And um, so he broke the law doing that. But then the tapes that they submitted, um, because I knew he was at Walmart, and he brought them like a brown lunch bag full of stuff and said, she did it with this and handed handed it, went to the car, and I'm sitting in a, in a sheriff SUV out in front of Walmart in my skivvies and my tank top um, watching this. And he went to the car and pulled the bag out and handed it to the cops and told them that that was the evidence where I had done X, Y, and Z to him. And they took that and filed it into evidence and took his word over mine. And of course, I didn't talk to them. I interrogated the cop all the way from the house to Walmart so I can tell you how long she'd been on the force, the names of both of her children, what they had done for Halloween, because it was November 3rd. Um, I knew why she went and wanted to become a law enforcement officer, uh, knew how old her kids were. I interrogated her. The only thing she got out of me was my name. Not your right serial number, right? Nope. <laughs> they didn't even know um, anything about my background with law enforcement until I had been in Marion County Jail for like two months and another inmate came in and knew who I was. And they pulled me from the pod and put me in segregation for like 48 hours. Which in, in for those that don't know, segregation in jail is pretty bad. Um, depending on the facility, they put you in this plastic, it's like a plexiglass wall and they there's a bed in there and a sink and a toilet and everybody can see everything that you do. And they put you in there in solitary and they keep your lights on 24 seven. and. You're staying there, so. So it's a form of torture, basically. Yeah, it is. It's, it's pretty bad. I, I mean, the the other inmates um, would like be, be the newspaper at the door to me, so I had something to read. But I wasn't allowed to have like my toothbrush in there. I wasn't allowed to have uh, my slides. I couldn't have a book. None of that stuff was allowed. I had a mat and uh, that and my my uniform, the jail uniform. That was it. They didn't even offer you a Bible to reform you. No. Nope. That's amazing. Nope. I I lived in Marion County for five years, six years, and I think Marion County is one of the places that if we got attacked, I would like to see that it would be one of the places where the missile would land. Marion County to me is the pits. It's the old white boy religious and conservative it's southern network. It's backwards, um, good old boy system. I had a saying about Marion County. There's a church on every corner and a Bible in every pocket, and then there was me. And that's when I was living there. Well, now there's a church on every corner and every drug dealer behind them. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you doing? Tickling my leg. Go Rolling away. meth left behind the church. Uh, it's it's a pretty bad place and it's gotten worse. Yeah, it has. And um, in, in Florida, um, it's whoever caused the law enforcement first is automatically assumed to be the victim, especially in any sort of domestic cases. Exactly. So, say, I call the cops right now because she literally was sitting next to me and if she breathed on me or touched me that is considered aggravated assault and because she has her sunglasses in the front of her dress I could say it was with a deadly weapon even though she didn't touch her glasses she barely touched me that is aggravated assault with a deadly weapon um, or at least that's the charge that she would get and then I would say oh well she touched me so for those who don't know, assault is the verbal action, battery is the physical action. So if I tell, what if I call the cops and say, you know, I want um, my mom put her hands on me and I want you to, to arrest her, um, they would come and they would automatically charge her with assault. And then I would say, oh, well, she put her hands on me. So now, even though she's never done the verbal action and never said, well, I'm going to touch you, which is the act of assault, um, the fact that she's touched me, that is battery. And in the state of Florida, that's all you have to do is touch somebody and you can be arrested for battery. Now, um, where the aggravated stuff comes in, it's usually whether there's was a tent behind it or force Bruises. or anything like that. But yeah, it's, it's pretty it's pretty crazy for the laws here in Florida for, for those of you that live in other states or other countries that don't know what it's like to live in a very backwoods state where um, it's very religious, Christian religious based 
um, things where when I say good old boy system, it means um, you've got somebody that knows somebody else and it's you pat my back if I pat yours kind of thing. That's what I mean when I say good old boy system. So say one cop rolls up on the scene and they know somebody on the scene, they're going to take that person's word over anybody else on the scene because they know that person. So it's flashing at me again. Oh, yeah. See yeah. Yeah. Hi, Blinky. I, I, my phone is just fucking pissed. Oh. Well, it just died. I just died again? Yes. Uh, what kind of a charger does it take? I might be able to plug yeah, it in. Check my dad's desk over there. He's got a wire for his work phone um, on uh, the external dongle, I think. I should have it. So, what else do you want? I don't know. You want to talk about anything else? Yeah, I want to ask you a question. All right. Okay, you've known me now just about 20 years. Yeah. And you've seen me grow and mature as a woman from right after I transitioned to now. What changes do you see in me over this time period? Well, to be honest, I didn't think of you as anything but a woman, ever. Well, I, I, I know that, but as a... not I, I didn't mean as a woman, but I meant as a person. Uh, well, I have seen you married and uh, divorced. I've seen you married before and then divorced. And ended up in the middle of that somehow. <laughs> that was hysterical. Oh God. That was. Hysterical. I still have. I think I still have the emails from the wife. Um, Good job, Bonnie. Yeah. That was so funny. Hey. Oh, is that you laughing? I thought it was one of the cats getting <laughs> no, something. No, I don't know. that was me. Um, um, when I got divorced from Bonnie, we went to. I went to court. She didn't. I. I, I said I went there. <laughs> and the judge is there, and he's asking why you're getting divorced, and goes, "Are you both agreeable?" And yeah, they both say yes, and he's says, okay, divorce granted. Good luck to both of you in the future. I hope you've learned from this. And when it came to mine, <clears throat> I remember the judge was like, I don't understand. It's against the law for a woman to be married to another woman in the state. How could, how, what, what's this about? I don't understand this divorce. But you were a man, technically, when you were... I was a man when we got, when got married. married. So when I explained that <clears throat> to the judge, and he just looked and he went, but very oh, angry all of a sudden, and he didn't say a word, he just went, divorce granted, boom, with the gavel, and I went to him, aren't you going to wish me good luck to him? He goes, go, go. <laughs> I, was, I was laughing, I, the clerk was laughing, and most of the courtroom was laughing at the same time. I think over the years, through your growth as, um, and I don't even like the term trans woman, because I've always seen you as a woman. Mm -hmm. um, like my dad uses the term he, she, and I hate it. And I tell him, I said, that's not PC. <laughs> <laughs> How about a shim? A shim? She I don't think I've, uh, well, I haven't heard that one yet. That's, that was one I used two years ago. Oh, well, no, no. Um, <laughs> now I have, I, I dated a girl in high school that people used to ask, is that a guy or a girl? And you're like, it's a girl. <laughs> that used to always irritate me too. They would ask me if my girlfriend was a guy or a girl. No, it's female. She's Definitely a girl. female. She's a girl. <laughs> um, but, you know, I learned so much from you about being transgender. Or, I had so many questions because I was with a girl in high school, and you know, she broke my heart, trampled all over it, mm -hmm. set it on fire, and then kicked it to the ashes. So, um, and you've seen me date men. Yeah. Um, so I, I saw you marry one too at one time. Oh, Lord. Where's the gun? <laughs> um, but, like, I learned so much about myself from you, even watching you go through your changes and attend all the different things and just listen to the things that you learned and you explored because I didn't know any of that stuff. I didn't know what BDSM was. I had no idea. Um, I didn't know a lot of things um, because I guess you could say I was sheltered because I didn't know a whole lot of like, God, do you remember the time I asked you about a BJ? And I didn't know yes, what to do. Yes, I remember you. that very well. She told me it was like eating an ice cream. Oh, and oh, I don't oh. think I can eat an ice cream today without picturing the descriptive <laughs> details oh, oh. that she gave me about a BJ. You take the cone. No, 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 mom. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Stop. But like, I didn't don't like, because I was abused Stop. growing up, I wasn't ever, I have, I have like problems with PTSD and flashbacks to doing those kinds of activities. Mm -hmm. So when I was finally comfortable enough with a partner to do or be interested in doing something like that, I didn't know what to do. Um, 
That's where mom came in. <laughs> yes. Oh, buddy, did I get a descriptive detail on that one, and I'll oh, never my forget goddess, it. Goddess, I just thought of something so funny. What did you not? Um, wife. I'm could listening. you could you imagine how she would have been at Tracy's workshop? Oh my God, Tracy did an how to perform fellatio. I don't even know what that is. Same as a BJ. Oh, low job. That's the That's the term. Is, is a technical term for like kind of like what's this? Oral sex on a woman. Felicia was Felicia oral sex was... on a man. Jeez. I didn't know that. Still learn. <laughs> now you learn from your auntie. So, ah. so anyway, moving right along. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still learning things, people. Still learning things. Um, but like, I knew that like people had different interests in different people for different reasons. But I didn't know about people that were born one gender that became another gender and the rationale and the thinking and the feelings and everything that go behind it. I didn't know any of that stuff until my early 20s. Um, which for those that don't know, I was born in 1980. I know I've said my age a few times, so has she. So I, and this was early 2000s. So this wasn't like a topic of conversation back then. Um, it, was, it wasn't as prevalent as this today where people are comfortable about talking about these things because back then it was still like kind of a, a Passe topic. You, it was something you didn't talk about. It was just, taboo. Uh, yeah, thank you. It was it was like talking about being molested as a child. It was something that it went on behind closed doors. You didn't discuss it in public, mixed company, those kinds of things. It's it's like the advent of Me Too, the Me Too movement. Yeah, well, I fall under that category. I, so do I, because but, I was, I had two instances after I transitioned where people did try to rape me. And that, and, and um, one time it was five guys around me. They were like ages. 15 to 19 maybe, it was on my mail route in Daytona Beach. And they circled around me and it was like the sharks were circling. And they started asking questions uh, or, you know, like derogatory statements. Oh, what is that? And stuff like that. And then finally they said, why don't we pull down its skirt and see what it's got underneath. And whoops, what ass. And I, well, I got real close to doing that. I, like I said, I was a boxer one time. I learned some martial arts tricks from a friend of mine who was a Marine back in Vietnam. And I felt then that, okay, I'm being threatened. This is the time I need to fight. I put the mail down on the ground that I was delivering. I just put it down and I turned around and I went into my fighting stance. And I said, okay, there's five of you, but I guarantee I'll kill two of you before you get me. Yeah. And they rapidly dispersed. Uh, same thing happened to Dad when he was in school. But and I learned real quick that if you get bullied because you're different, if they show you, if you show them, you will fight back. They're afraid because they don't know which one of those five or six or how many that you're going to hurt. You have to that, stand person up may, that person may hurt me. But do I'm going to take somebody out doing it. Do I want to get hurt by that person that we're all around? Am I going to be the one that that person's going to really hurt bad? And they're not sure who you're going to go for. So they kind of leave at that moment. And I was okay for a half hour. And then I just lost it, broke down hysterical crying, came back to the post office with the mail that I still had to deliver. I put it on the supervisor's desk. I told them what happened. And they said, well, you know, you may have to go out and finish the route. And I looked at him and I said oh, to him, nice. I looked at him and I said to him, if I was the pretty blonde woman that works in here also, and this happened to her, you'd send the Marines out. And I really was angry over that. I and mean, I, I called the Jacksonville, the EO, or EO in, up there, which is like... Equal opportunity for Yeah. Me. And they came down. We had a big meeting in the office. And that supervisor was told that if he did anything like that to me again, he would no longer be a supervisor. He might not even be working for the post office anymore. But they gave me a very hard time, and the day I could retire, I did. I think it's wrong. Yeah, it was wrong, and it is wrong. And I, I, the reason I became such an activist after losing my family and the crap I had to put up with at work, I became an activist. I've done speeches in Washington, D.C., Chicago. Atlanta, all over Florida. Yeah, now, all over Florida. now some in New Mexico. <laughs> and did you go to California once? No, I never went to California. Um, but the reason I do these things is because I don't want somebody like me to have to go through the shit I went through. You know, it's like it's, for me, it's a cause, and I, I stick to it. I've spoken at churches. I've spoken at universities. 
I've spoken before a couple of uh, socialist organizations. Um, I just I've just spoken wherever asked, and, and the most rewarding thing for me when I speak is to have a parent come up to me and tell me my son or my daughter just told me they were transgender and I didn't know how to handle it so, and I heard you were going to be here talking and I came here and thank you so much for helping me understand this subject and so I have, can help my child go through what they're going through. That to me, everything else is nothing compared to being having words like that said to you by somebody. It's, it's like it's so rewarding on the inside to know that you've helped somebody. No? That always makes me a little emotional. <laughs> it, it comes Why do you think I'm not saying anything? It, it comes with the territory, you know. It just, a lot of people don't know this about me, but I'm very sensitive. I am a Libra. We are the scales, okay? Um, I don't really show my emotions a whole lot, but when it comes to hot button topics, they usually show. I know when Rebecca's in that mood because I can tell from what she's posting on Facebook, or and that's when I will send get me a, a message, <laughs> get a hold of her, <laughs> so to speak, and say, "Okay, let's let's figure this out now. What's going on here?" And uh, oh, somebody made me very angry yesterday. Very, very angry. I got cussed at for no reason by just doing simply something that I'm supposed to be doing, and I got cussed at, and I said. Uh, I, I know what I'm doing is said you don't need to cuss at me. And then they told me that they were an adult and they had every right to cuss at me. But you're an adult too, so then they have no right to cuss at a fellow adult unless they want to get cussed back. I am this close to telling her where to go and how to get there. I am yeah. I am very close. But the problem is, is because she works for another YouTube channel, um, that I'm afraid that the other YouTuber who I do respect greatly that she will do something that will ruin my YouTube channel. And I honestly don't think that the owner of the channel would do something, but all it would take is one word from her and my YouTube channel would be dead. So, yeah, people like that kind of have you over in the barrel, but you know what? If you